Hi folks, it's Kevin with Matt Practical. Uh, this is just a quick little tutorial on how to make a locator globe. Uh, if you have ArcGIS, then you have this capability. So Arc Desktop, if we go here to ArcGIS, and then I'm going to go ahead and choose Arc Globe 10.8. Doesn't matter if you're on 10.7, 10.6, it'll work. And then I'll start up ArcGIS Arc Globe. It's a, um, it's like your own personal Google Earth. Okay. Um, you can add shapefiles to it. You can add any geographic data that you could add to ArcMap. And it's a nice way to make a cool little clean locator map. We'll just do a blank globe, and this is what you get. All right, so it already has some satellite imagery draped on it. I think it's uh, um, maybe uh, blue marble or something along those lines. But it's a little dark for my liking. Uh, if you were to turn it off, and I'm going to turn off the elevation layers, and just you see we have this kind of black hole of Earth. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and add some imagery. And I just go right back to that... Uh, Natural Earth 2, 50 million shaded relief with water. It's just a it's just a great rendition of the planet, and there we go. Um, and this needs a little bit of work to make it look right. So if we go into the properties here, and we'll do all the usual suspects. So under the display tab, uh, resample, we'll go to bilinear interpolation for continuous data because it's a raster. That'll just make it a little bit smoother. Hit apply, and then under symbology. This thing comes in stretched as a percent clip, and I'm going to say none, and then I don't want to apply a gamma stretch. Hit apply. There we go. So that's what it's supposed to look like. We could brighten it up a little bit, but I think that looks pretty good. Okay, super. Um, and then I'm going to go into the globe layer. So this is just like the data frame properties in ArcMap, but it's for the globe. And on that, there's a bunch of different tabs, and one of them is sun position. And if we go ahead and enable the sun lighting, um, you get a little sun on this uh, world map, and I'm just going to drag it over, and in um, commemoration of solstice today, I'm going to drop it uh, a little bit above North America, and let's see here, uh, why does it look so funny? Is it based on time, latitude? It should let me... Oh, there we go. I'm just going a little bit off. So I'm just going to try and get it... Oh, I'm in the wrong place. Uh, cancel. I wanted to map this time around South America, right? If I get my little hand tool, I can actually get north in the right place and drag it around until you get it just right. All right. So for my map in my mini atlas, I'm uh, mapping South America. So now, if I go to my globe layers, now we'll get the look we're looking for. So I'll drop this down on the equator for the equinox. And then you can mess with the brightness versus the darkness. And what we're just looking for is a little bit of a drop shadow kind of on the underside of the planet, just so it looks 3D, right? Because if you turn this off and hit apply, it just looks like a flat disk, right? But if we turn it on, then it gives us that little bit of shadow that just makes it come out a little bit nicer and say OK. All right. And then, oh, yeah, I wanted to turn off a few things. So under globe layers again, under the general, uh, or is it backgrounds, background? So I'm going to turn off the atmospheric halo and the stars and hit apply. There we go. Now we got a nice clean planet. I'll mess with my scale a little bit, so about as big as I can get it on my page. And uh, now we're ready to export it. So we'll just go to File, Export Globe. And in this particular case, I'm going to call it Globe 2 because I've already worked on one. And uh, 300 DPI, and we want to choose PNG. So there's a bunch of different raster formats, and what we want is a PNG, and that's a portable network graphic, and that allows us to have a transparent background, and uh, that's important if we want to use it to wrap text in InDesign later on in this assignment. So we'll save that guy, and then we're pretty much done in Arc um, Globe. So I'll go ahead and just minimize this guy and open up folder where I had that so my globe 2 and I'm going to right click and just tell it to open with and I'm going to open it with Adobe Photoshop so there are a number of different ways you could do this Adobe Photoshop is just what I have on my computer and it's nice and handy okay so there we go so it came in basically as a snapshot of the entire screen it's a little too much black area and that's what we're here to get rid of anyways so over here under layers the background is locked if you just double click on it it'll turn it into layer 0 I'll say OK and now I can work with it. If I use this magic wand tool over here, you know, where you can hit W on your keyboard, and then when you click on the tool and you look up here in the menu, we're going to go for the basically the defaults. Contiguous, because we're trying to grab all the black. Tolerance 32 is great. And if we just click on the black, you'll see that it grabbed all of the black around it, right? Um, if we just hit delete, right, that gets rid of it. 
and uh, control D makes the marching ants go away, but then I'm going to zoom in to the edge, and what you'll see is that you really have a stair-stepped pixelization right there. And I don't really want that. I want that to go away. So I'm going to go ahead and back out and control Z back a couple of times. All right, so I'm going to select it again, but this time I'm going to refine the edge. So if I go under selection, and then there's the select and mask, there's a modify, you can smooth. These are all the new tools. I kind of like the old refine edge tool. So if I hold down the shift and just click once on the select and mask, you get this older refine edge tool. And this allows us to refine our edge in a better way. Let's see if I can zoom in on the edge here. All right, so there's our edge of the planet. And you can look at it in a number of ways. But the thing that I do is I just hit my smooth tool. And you'll be able to see it just goes ahead and blurs that little edge. And that just makes it so that we have a much cleaner globe when we're done. So I hit OK. And now when I hit Delete and then Marching Ants, you can see that it's just feathered along the edge. And if I go full size, now I've got a nice clean edge around my globe. OK, and now I'm going to take my Crop tool. And I'm just going to crop this thing to a square that's a little bit tighter because we don't need all that extra space. And because it's a PNG, it'll save with this transparent background. So when we place this image inside of InDesign, we'll be able to wrap text around it right around the curve of the globe. Um, after I've got my crop tool set, I'll just hit Enter, and there we go. And then I'm just going to do File, and then Save. And it's done, ready to go. So we've got this nice, clean PNG that'll work perfectly for our, uh, for our uses. Um, you can use other tools to do this. You could probably pull this off with Google Earth, but uh, if you do have ArcGIS software, you automatically have ArcGlobe, and this is a nice clean way to get a locator map. It's quite large right now. It'll probably be somewhere around that size, or maybe even smaller when we put it into our InDesign document. All right, that's all I have for you. If this was a helpful tutorial, give it a like. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time. Thanks a bunch.